You know, uh, every time there's a free speech case in the Supreme Court or an issue in the media, people uh, resort immediately to these catchphrases. And the catchphrases are things like, well, not all speech is protected. Or the classic, well, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. They're really obscuring the debate. They're not engaging what the real issues are. So when they say um, there's not all speech is protected, well, of course not all speech is protected. But saying that doesn't tell you anything. That's like if I shot somebody and the police came and I said, well, there's some circumstances under which I'm allowed to shoot people. That's not really responsive. It doesn't go to the issue of, well, how about this time? I went to Stanford University for college. I studied political science, like a lot of people who want to go to law school but aren't completely sure why. And it was during college that I really started to develop an interest in the First Amendment. And it was during a time, one of the uh, upsurges of controversy on campus about speech codes and speech issues. So I wound up doing my senior honors thesis in college with a law school professor on the subject of legal restrictions on hate speech. And I thought it was really interesting because I thought it was very much uh, emblematic of very American problem, and that is how do we express our disapproval, our moral disapproval for bad things like bigotry while not restricting liberties. I met uh, my current partner, Tom Brown, and after about three years at Shepard Bowen, he and I started our own firm, Brown and White, here in Los Angeles with an aim of doing really whatever we wanted, whatever we were good at, whatever made us happy. I had been writing online on forums and things like that as an outlet for creativity for a long time, probably back to 2000 or so. And around 2005, I decided I would start a blog, a very primitive one, uh, just so I could write things, not thinking anyone would ever care necessarily to read them, but just keeping it in my hand in terms of trying to write something every day. I started out just as Ken with no last name uh, because at the time, uh, you know, I was working for big firms. I was concerned at the point I was in my career about the impact of writing openly and honestly and sometimes profanely about issues and I was worried about it coming back to hurt me. Maybe 2010 or so, I decided to give up the pretense. I felt that I was established enough, you know, I was at my own place. I felt that I could be use my own name, and so I started doing that. And in general, I haven't regretted it. I think the right to anonymous speech is very central in the First Amendment in American life. Throughout American history, people have said uh, unpopular things, incendiary things, politically dangerous things uh, behind the shield of anonymity. Um, a lot of bad things come with that. There's some really terrible, immoral, anonymous behavior on the internet. And while I support the legal right to anonymity, I support resisting the court system when it tries to reveal anonymous people. I have to say I don't oppose people trying to figure out who somebody is based on good old-fashioned journalism and detective work. That's the risk of speaking anonymously, that someone smart will figure it out, and that, that's the risk we take. What I started to do with uh, what I call the Pope Hat Signal was occasionally when people asked me to, to write about their cases and um, ask lawyers out there who are readers to contribute pro bono work or advice or support. And I've always been very happy and touched by all the people out there who are willing to give pro bono help uh, to, uh, to people who need it to protect free speech. A lot of them are also followers of uh, the FIRE. Uh, it tends to be a group of lawyers who like the FIRE, believe in free speech, and think it's worth uh, contributing their time and effort. And to have uh, lawyers and non-lawyers out there who care respond. The Foundation has a wonderful record on winning cases, but just as important uh, is FIRE's efforts to remind students uh, of what's important, to remind students of why free speech is important, to cultivate in their hearts that uh, appetite for liberty. It's long been remarked that uh, 
rights are only as durable as our respect for them. Uh, Justice Learned Hand, in one of his famous uh, speeches, said that liberty lies in our hearts, and if it's not there, then no court can protect it. And if it is there, then no one can take it away.